Shalom friends, welcome to a small sanctuary. My name is Esther, I'm a rabbi, a wife, a mom, a creative, and this is just my simple little YouTube channel to share some things about living a Jewish life with wisdom and beauty and purpose. I am new to this whole YouTube thing, and if you wanna see more content, you know what to do. Please hit that like and subscribe button hit that notification bell and leave a comment down below. For this first episode, I'm actually going to talk about the month of Elul. So the month of Elul is the month that we are currently in preceding Tishrei, the month which brings in the high holidays, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Now, people are quite familiar with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. I will post some links down below if you're new to Judaism or new to these festivals so that you can read a, a little more about them. But what I actually wanted to talk about was not Tishrei, but Elul and how we can prepare our hearts and till the soil of our souls in preparation for this very special and holy time of year. One of the particular strategies that I wanted to talk with you guys about today is sacred journaling, which you can do during the month of Elul. So this has been part of my practice for a long time, not just for Elul, but in general. And that always feels really refreshing to open a new journal and look at all the potential that is there on the pages. I have been keeping a journal um, since I was 14. So I'm 44 now, so that is 30 years of journaling and I have all of my journals and it is a wonderful record of my life. And so I know firsthand the compelling power of sacred journaling. So of course you will need a nice little book that makes you feel happy and that has good, good smooth paper that's comfortable for writing and a pen that makes you feel comfortable as well. And I've chosen this Lamy and pen. Now, for sacred journaling, there are many strategies you can take. First of all, you can just write from the heart, journal your life, reflect back on your year. But if that is a little bit intimidating, or if you are facing some writer's block, there are actually loads of prompts that you can do, and I will share some of those resources down below as well. There's something called the 10Q Vault, in which you get sent a question, you fill it out, you send it back in, and then the vault is opened next year for you to read uh, what you were processing the previous year and how much you've grown spiritually as a person over the course of the year. There are prompts through websites like ritualwell.org and downloadable journals that allow you to travel through Elul with the questions the writers have authored as your inspiration. And of course, there is Psalm 27. So Psalm 27 is the Psalm that we normally recite daily during the season of all. And it is a Psalm that seems to have many disparate themes in it. There's an element of conquest. There's an element of uh, human relationships and the conflicting nature of human relationships. There is a crying out for God. There are all these disparate themes in the psalm, but actually the psalm itself ties those themes together in its own ability to reflect on itself and on you as the reader of that psalm in terms of making meaning in your life and finding your way back to some of those core relationships, whether it is with God, with other people, or yourself. Looking at the psalm and just focusing on one verse each day is a good strategy or focusing on the verses that speak to you in that moment and using those as journal prompts can also be a really meaningful practice. There is also a great 
Psalm book and app by the Central Conference of American Rabbis. Um, the app can be used without the book, the book can be used without the app, but they work very well together. And this was also created with the intention to take you through this period, reflecting on the Psalm, interpretations of the Psalm, and your own story that you write and journal in relationship with the Psalm and the holy month of Elul. Apart from journaling, which I've just described in this broad range, there are other strategies for self-reflection and self-improvement and teshuvah, repentance or return, that you can utilize at this time. So, apart from journaling, we have letters and cards. You can write a letter to yourself, squirrel it away and open it next year. And again, see how much you have grown, what has happened in your life. You can, of course, write letters and cards to other people. Now, these can be broken down into two main categories. Slicha letters, letters of apology, of making amends, or maybe a little lighter on the touch, Happy New Year cards, which is also a great way to reconnect with people. People love getting handwritten mail. It's something that uh, we don't do as often as we used to historically. And so even something simple like a Rosh Hashanah Happy New Year card can really help you pull some of those relationships together. But if you are looking for a little more depth and transformation, then reflecting on how you may have fallen short in a relationship with another person and broaching that topic in a slicha letter might be a really powerful tool. Of course, such a letter is meant to be the beginning of a conversation and not the end of a conversation. And even if you struggle to find the right words, just saying something like, you have been in my heart, I've been reflecting on our relationship, I wanna check in with you, I feel like I could have been a better, fill in the dotted line, friend, spouse, child, parent, colleague, whatever it may be. Um, and I just wanna open the conversation with you and um, let's do the coffee together sometime. Or, you know, if you feel something really pressing on your soul that you have failed that person in, or you have fallen short of the standard you set for yourself, you can name that. That is okay. That is a fundamental part of Teshuvah, as Maimonides Rambam defines, that being able to have that confessional moment, that vidui, um, you can put that in there. But if that feels a little in too intense, you don't have to put that in there. Um, that really depends on your mental and emotional well-being, your relationship with the other person, and whether you feel safe communicating that to them. So I absolutely encourage you to use your own discernment for exploring the relational aspects of doing teshuva and balancing your sincere growth spiritually with your mental health and well-being and the dynamics of each particular relationship you engage in. Rosh Chodesh Elul, one month until Rosh Hashanah, until the new year. So we're going to blow the shofar, okay? Mama is going to do it first and she's going to do it badly. It is also customary to blow the shofar this time of year. There's not much journaling to be done with a shofar, but it is another tangible, meaningful moment that you can incorporate into your Elul practice. Of course, there is things you can do around reading, getting meaningful spiritual books, Jewish or non-Jewish, and reading them at set intervals to orient your heart in the season of Teshuvah. And of course, there is music. And 
Tishre and High Holiday, Spotify lists. Music plays a very important part in Judaism. So by all means, find the music that lifts up your heart. And here is a tip. Choose a theme song. Choose a song once a year that speaks deeply to the circumstances of your life where you find yourself in this moment. And let that song weave into your consciousness. Pop it into your earphones as you do your chores. Sit with it in prayer and meditation. That is also a really good practice. Of course, last but not least at all is the discipline of prayer, of tefillah and other spiritual practices that are related to prayer, such as meditation, mindfulness, even intentional walking, whatever works for you to get into that contemplative zone is an excellent tool for Elul. And this is a season where for those of us who would like to build a prayer practice or who already have a prayer practice, where we intensify that prayer practice a little bit. And prayer is also a great self-reflective tool. The Hebrew word for prayer, the Hebrew verb for prayer, lehit palel, has within it the root word palal, which means to judge. And it is a reflexive word. So you can either um, interpret it as God is judging us, or God is ass assessing us, or the divine is holding us morally accountable in some way, or um, you are assessing yourself or taking stock of yourself. And I think those are two great pathways, depending on your own belief system. So I just wanted to um, touch on that last one as well. And I will do a separate video about how to build a Jewish prayer practice. So I will leave all the resources um, in the comments for your further exploration and on my blog as well, where all of this is lined out for your discernment. So this was my first video, a little bit scary, but here we are, it's the 21st century kids. And I hope this was helpful to you. Feel free to leave a comment. What are you looking forward to doing during the month of Elul? What is speaking to your heart, to your soul? Um, what is a spiritual priority for you this month? So leave those comments down below and then i hope to see you in the next one thank you for being with me today and shalom uvracha peace and blessings to you